What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Takara Tomy Hound and compare it to the Fans Toys Willis, their version of Hound. So just a forewarning, this just came out recently, whereas this figure came out back in 2015. So it is a little bit dated, but they're both uh, very good, high quality versions of Transformers Hound. So that's where we're going to take a look at it. Uh, obviously, this whole video is my opinion. So if you have one or the other and you prefer it, then you win. You, you get what you like. So these videos are really my opinion based on handling both figures so that if somebody hasn't purchased one of these, they can make a decision. Um, but if you've already purchased one and you're happy with your purchase, then I'm glad that you got what you wanted. So with that being said, let's get into the review. I will try to keep the Takara Tommy Hound on the left and the Willis figure on the right. But I may get messed up during the video, but we will try to keep that consistent. So let's get into it. So we'll start off with accessories here in robot mode. And here's everything you get. There's a lot of stuff for both. Uh, they both have um, pretty good selection, but there's some stuff that's pretty much the same. So let's just eliminate the things that we get the same. So they both have a gun. Clearly Willis is a lot bigger. They both have the hollow guns. We'll take those out. They both have the laser scope. Now, this one has a little extra piece so you can mount it in robot mode, or you can use this gun in robot mode. But I also showed in my review you can use this in robot mode as a gun in his hand, so we'll take those out. They both have alternate faces, so the fan toys comes with a more, I guess, toyish face, or the silverish face. And the Takara Tommy just has two extra faces, so we'll call those even and take those out. And then you've got the face mask for fans toys for underwater. The hound is built into his head, so we'll take that out. So they both have that. And you do get this alternate machine gun, more realistic style gun. So that is extra. And you get a mounting bracket for this shoulder cannon. Now this shoulder cannon for Takara Tomy does hide away in the vehicle mode. You cannot mount it to the back. So that is a little bit extra. Um, and then for Takara Tomy, you do have these extra rear view mirrors. Those aren't really accessories. They're just replacement parts in case those break. So we'll take those out. And here's what you're left with at the end of what's different between the two. And I would say I feel that the Takara Tomy has the edge on accessories because they've got a little bit more playability, you know, the soft top, the spike especially, which articulates very well. I showed that in my other review. And then these hollow figures, which you can play with. And then the key for Ravage, which doesn't come with a cage, but it does come with a key. So you can do a little bit of interactivity between Hound and Ravage. And actually, I'll show that a little bit later. But because he comes with all this stuff, we're going to give accessories to Takara Tomy. Now, when it comes to Sculpt, this is a very subjective kind of thing but let's let's put the g1 cartoon over here so we can take a look at these two and for me my personal opinion is the takara tomi is very close to the g1 cartoon and it also has really smooth sculpted lines that uh, go closely with the cartoon now some people might say hey i don't want that i want the more you know physically accurate kind of thing where it looks like a jeep and and we'll, we'll get these both guys into Jeeps in a, in a little bit, but when you look at the sculpt and you look at the cartoon, uh, for me, hands down, the Takara Tomy hits the cartoon the way I would expect. So I'm going to give sculpt to Takara Tomy. Here they both are with Transform Elements TE01 Op Leader, their version of Optimus Prime, and they both do look good. Um, but because of the flat paint on Op Leader, the Takara Tomy actually fits in a lot better because it's also got a flat paint. Now, that's a little odd because the MP44 is not a flat paint. It's a glossy paint. It's got glossy red and glossy blue. So I find it odd they didn't use glossy paint on MP47, which was a release that came out after Optimus Prime. So I'm not sure why they did that. But with my collection, I've got Op Leader. I did have MP44 and I got rid of it. So this is my Optimus. And 
I think this fits in a lot better with the aesthetic and the just the overall look of TE-01 than the fans toys. Again, don't get me wrong, I like the glossy paint, I like the look of this, I like the shiny versus the flat, but in terms of my collection, this seems to fit in better with Op Leader. Now in terms of build and paint, the Fans Toys had a lot of die cast. So this entire top section is die cast. There's die cast back here. This windshield is die cast. There's die cast in the feet. Almost the whole foot is die cast. Uh, and then the entire figure is painted. Let's see if I can get in close and show you this metallic-y flecked paint, which is really beautiful. And unfortunately, the Takara Tomy paint is a flat paint. It doesn't really shine. And again, they're going for the cartoon, the G1 cartoon. I would have preferred a shiny paint. Also, the other problem with the paint on the Takara Tomy is it flecks off. So let's just get in close here. Hopefully I can show you this. You can see there's some paint issues right here that are coming off. And also a little bit on the thighs. You can see little bits flake off. And that's due to uh, articulating him. We'll get to articulation in a second. But because of the paint issues that you get with the Takara Tomy and the fact that there is literally no die cast. I could, at least I couldn't find any die cast on this figure. Some of maybe the inner hardware might be metal, like the some screws and stuff, but I couldn't find any hardware that was die cast. So I'm going to give build, build quality to fans toys because they've really nailed it with this solid feeling. You know, it, it takes you back to the G1 days where all the toys were die cast. You know, it just feels like that. And so, and then the paint itself really, I've, I've transformed this many times and the paint does not wear off. So I'm going to give build and paint to fans toys. So articulation wise, these guys are very different. Um, this was much older figure so the technology and the hardware is is different but I'm just going to show you some limitations I don't want to go through every single piece of articulation but I'll show you where they're especially where they're different so the head the fan stories is on a swivel a rotating swivel so you get up and down and it rotates but the Takara Tomy is on a ball jointed swivel so you get the side to side get that extra movement it also moves in and out this way so you can get them a little bit further out if you wanted them all the way out, you can push it in. So you got a lot of options there with this head. Now, some people don't like the neck, the fact that it's on this post. I'll be honest with you, I've transformed this several times. I've been playing with this for the last few days. I don't even notice or bother with this. There's just appears to be a little bit of kibble there. It doesn't really bother me. And I don't have any issue with um, that neck joint there. Uh, other articulation that's different, the fan stoids has just a 90 degree bend on the elbow. The Takara Tomy's got a double jointed elbow that gets you all the way up to there so you get the full articulation. Also the Takara Tomy has a swivel and an ab crunch up to there. The fan stoids does have an ab uh, a swivel but no ab crunch. If you try to get the ab crunch you end up taking it apart so there isn't really a crunch there. Ankle-wise, you do have the same level of, of tilt, but the rotation here is a little bit hindered and also sometimes gets loose, which makes it hard to transform the, or uh, to pose the fans toys one. It still gets it. You still get the ankle p tilt and ankle pivot. It's just they get loose over time. Uh, and then you've also got this swivel and rotation. This one does go up and down, but it doesn't have a swivel. So more articulation on this as well. So all in all, oh, and, and I'll sort of forget about this, the butterfly joint for the arm. It does break up the sculpt, but you do get it. So you could, could bring the arms in closer to each other if you needed to for some particular pose. So all in all, you get a lot more articulation. Uh, the legs as well, you get articulation up to there and angle knee bend more than 90 degrees. For the fans toys, this is not a hip skirt, so it gets hindered there. And then the knee does dub is double jointed, but it's hindered by all the hardware back here. So it tried to have the same articulation, but it's 
a little bit more limited. So that's really it for articulation. So based on the extra articulation you get with the Takara Tomi version, we'll give Takara Tomi the articulation. Let's move on to transformation. So I'm not going to actually do transformation on screen. Now I just re I realized I never actually did a review of the Fans Toys Willis. I did a fix video to show how to how to tighten some things, but I'm not going to go through transformation just because that's going to take up a lot of time. But I will kind of show you some of the inner workings. So the Takara Tomi had a lot of panels that close up and hide everything away. And that's what's really beautiful about this. You look at these legs and feet, and they really hide everything away. If you look at the fans' toys, you got a lot of ugly stuff on the back. And again, this is an older figure, but you can see the, the, the engineering behind this is not quite as good, uh, as well as the transformation is a little bit tricky. This one, again, the transformation is, is complex, but if you follow the instructions or you follow a video, you can very easily get it to here without breaking anything, without causing any problems. The fans toys, there was a tricky bit with the head and the arms. The arms are all tucked up into here, and there was a sequence, and MGO did a really good video showing you the sequence in, in order of how you had to do it. If you don't follow that sequence, you can't get it into robot mode. It's very difficult. Um, so for transformation, we're going to give that to Takara Tommy. And going along with transformation is engineering. The engineering on this Takara Tommy is just outstanding. How they get it from vehicle mode, the very accurate vehicle mode, to this robot mode is really impressive. And again, don't get me wrong, I, I still like the fans' toys transformation, but you, and engineering, but you can't um, you can't really compare the engineering between these two. The engineering here is just uh, really high quality. So I'll give engineering to Takara Tomi as well. Here we have them in their alt modes and they're definitely different sizes but they've got a lot of similarities. So a lot of the details, they both got the winch, they both got the rear view mirrors on the side, they have the lights, although the Willis has a little bit more detail on those lights. Uh, these are repro labels, but you know you basically can put them in the same spots so you can have the Autobot symbols on the inside or on the back. I guess you've got the Jerry Cascan and the spare tire. Now the Takara Tomi tire is broken up because it transforms with the figure and goes inside the feet, so that's a little bit ugly, but not too bad. These have to be removed for transformation. So, it's hard to say which is better because, hey, do you want to remove stuff? And then, and you can peg it onto the back of the windshield in robot mode. But both of these go into the feet, which is kind of cool. Or you can take them off, and, and these you just take off. They are painted nicely over here. They've got that glossy paint. Uh, they both have really nice detail on the, on the tail lights. So, this has the red and orange. This has got that copperish orange color. Sorry. You can take a look at the detail inside the cabs and you can see the Takara Tomi one has a lot more detail. It even has a Jeep written on the steering wheel there. Let's get spike out of the way. Or J. It's got a J on the steering wheel. It's got all the gauges. So the detail inside is very nice. Uh, it also obviously comes with spike so that's a nice added bonus as you get spike with the thing. And then the last detail here is you can open the trunk, the hood. You can't open the hood on Willis. And if you look inside the hood, you actually see some detail there. And it kind of looks like an engine because the way the arms are positioned, it makes it look like an engine. So that's a really neat little detail. Now let's bring in MP10 for comparison. So here he is. And in terms of scale, it does feel like the Fanso is a little bit big. Compared to MP10, this one seems to fit a lot better than Takara Tomi in terms of size and scale. And one of the things that's a giveaway is the wheels. The wheels on the Willis are even bigger than MP10. They're a little bit smaller on the Takara Tomi version than the MP10, but they're pretty big still. So I feel like in terms of the alt mode scale, the Takara Tomi definitely fits in better. In terms of playability, access accessories, and how you can play, the, the number of accessories are about the same, but the 
details on this, the opening hood, the interior, the, the fact that you have a spike that comes with it that sits inside the vehicle, the canopy that can be mounted on top, here's that canopy, and all of those extra details just add to the play factor of this. I'm not going to put that on, but it does go on there. All the playability, that's the playability of the Takara Tomy. So for that reason, I'm going to give the alt mode to Takara Tomy. Now the final uh, factor is cost. So when we look at the Fans Toys when it was released, I believe it was $100 at retail. Obviously this price has gone way up since the after third party aftermarket prices have shot up on this guy. He's now going anywhere between $140 to $200 depending on condition, whether it's new or not. This guy, brand new, is $160 retail. Uh, you could have got it from Amazon Japan a little bit cheaper, but at this point you can't get it for that price, so you're going to pay $160 of retail from any of the bigger stores. I do find this hood popping open kind of irritating, but um, but based on those two retail prices at release, I got to give it to Fans Toys for having a, a pretty good price when it when it released. Final thoughts wise, I think. Both of these are pretty good figures. Uh, you can see the scores up above. I think it's six to three for Takara Tomy over Fans Toys. And the score doesn't say it all. I, I do prefer the Takara Tomy, but if you've already got Fans Toys Willis, and you, especially if you paid a premium price, if you paid a high collector's item price, if you got it for retail, then, you know, you you may consider changing it out, but a lot of people that have this Fans Toys Willis aren't going to change it out because it's still a really nice figure. It feels really good in your hands, very premium, and the, the value on this has gone up because it's a collector's item, so some people want to keep it just for that purpose. Also, some people are Fans Toys collectors, so they might want to keep it for that. But if you haven't purchased either of these and you're looking for the, the better one, as far as my opinion is concerned, I believe the Takara Tomy is the better one in terms of what you get for the money. But if you've already got Willis and you're happy with him, then you win, you keep him, and you win. But that's really it for this review. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.